Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, January 30th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of medicine. Leprosy, probably not something you worry about on a regular basis, even though approximately 200,000 new cases are reported each year, although mostly in the developing world. So scientists at the University of Edinburgh are still studying it and have made some interesting discoveries. It's caused by a bacteria that initially hijacks Schwann cells living inside them. The bacteria actually have to stay inside human cells to avoid detection by the immune system. However, they quickly grow bored of just growing inside Schwann cells, so trigger their conversion into stem cells. These stem cells are mobile and drift through the body, also degrading the condition of nerves in the process. In experiments with mice, these bacteria-ridden stem cells seem to be able to settle in a variety of tissues, such as muscle and bone. This is the first known instance of something like a bacteria actually causing this kind of cellular change. But it gets even crazier. The hijacked stem cells also release chemicals that attract immune cells called macrophages. Some of the bacteria are able to jump ship and use the macrophages as a secondary mobile host for spreading the disease. Now knowing this will hopefully allow scientists and doctors to detect leprosy before symptoms arise by looking for the biochemical signatures of these stem cells as they are not usually found in the body and the disease is treatable with a multidrug regimen. Perhaps more importantly, though, is understanding how the bacteria converts normal cells into stem cells. Without direct genetic manipulation, the bacteria are able to create versatile and resilient stem cells without certain side effects of our current methods. Ironically, this devastating and still harmful disease may be the key to unlocking the potential of stem cells in regenerative medicine. Next is a quick update from the world of material science. Researchers from the Netherlands and Hong Kong have developed a cotton-based material with some interesting properties. Unlike some of the other advanced materials we've talked about on Brainstorm, this one isn't particularly complicated. But it's that simplicity which contributes to its potential usefulness. Cotton fabric coated in a particular polymer that allows it to absorb water. Again, not very exciting until you realize that the polymer coating allows it to absorb 340% of its weight worth in water. This is thanks to the nanoscale sponge-like structure the polymer creates, making it extremely hydrophilic. In fact, it loves water so much that it can even readily absorb ambient air moisture, but only at certain temperatures. The clever part of this material is that above 34 degrees Celsius, the polymer becomes hydrophobic and releases all the moisture as pure water. This was inspired by spiders in the desert that use their silk to collect moisture. Similarly, the idea is that this special cotton could be used anywhere with dry hot days that give way to cold misty nights. Both the cotton and polymer are relatively inexpensive and threads of the material could be applied directly to soil that needed extra water. Although the researchers will continue development trying to increase water capacity and adjust the temperature of water release. We end with news from the world of genetics. It was 60 years ago that Watson and Crick first deciphered the structure of DNA, the famous double helix. Now a team at Cambridge has proven that the structure of DNA isn't so cut and dry. We've talked about scientists making new structures from DNA in the laboratory, such as DNA origami used for nanotechnology. Another example is four-stranded or quadruple helix DNA, for decades just an in-lab curiosity. Except now, scientists have shown it exists in nature, and not even some obscure bacteria but inside human cells. They did this by creating a molecule that would bind to the quadruple helices. What they found were instances of quadruple helices throughout the human genome, and an increase during DNA replication before cell division. This accelerated replication in cancer cells further increases the instances of four-stranded DNA. Interestingly, the molecules binding to the structure seem to interfere with the overall replication and cell division, meaning quadruple helix DNA is a potential drug target when fighting cancer, since they occur more often in cancer cells. However, much more research is needed to understand this new form of DNA. It's unclear whether the four strands are functional and binding to them interferes with that. Or, if quadruple helices are a replication error and interference simply exacerbates the issue. Either way, they're an ideal target, seeing as they seem more vulnerable to interference from other molecules. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.